You're probably here looking to make freelancing work for you in 2025. I'm here to help you do exactly that. Whether you're just starting out or trying to level up, there's a lot happening right now that can make your life easier and your work more rewarding. So why am I qualified to talk about this? Why should you listen to anything I say? Well, I've helped more than 700 people start and scale with this since 2014 and I've done it myself. So I want to show you the exact steps you can take to get more clients and use new tools to speed up your process. We'll get into how you can use AI to get more done without burning out and how to turn one-off clients into repeat work so you're not always hunting for the next gig. So even now, the best places to start are Upwork and Fiverr. But before you say, oh, these places suck cheap clients, it all depends on how you use these websites. They're just tools. If you use them wrong, you get the wrong leads. To get results on Upwork and Fiverr in 2025, you need to focus on making your profile hyper-specific. It's not enough to just say you're a developer or a designer anymore and just list some programming languages or whatever. Clients are looking for people people who specialize in exactly what they need. So pick a niche. If you're a developer, say you specialize in building e-commerce stores with Shopify, or if you're a designer, talk about creating brand visuals specifically for SaaS startups, for example. Upwork and Fiverr are rewarding freelancers who clearly define their expertise. So don't be afraid to narrow down. The platforms now have AI-driven algorithms that match clients with freelancers based on how well your skills fit the job. This means if you're positioning your yourself too broadly, you're likely missing out on, on the best matches. Micro specialization isn't limiting like what some might believe. It actually helps you stand out from the generalists. Even if you're targeting like the types of leads you're going after are quite broad, the types of people you actually want to talk to you are quite narrow. So making it easier for clients to say, yes, this person is the one that I need will make you perform better on these websites. And also making people who you don't want to talk to run away from your profile will also make you perform on these websites. Another thing to focus on in these platforms is consistency and delivery. Upwork's algorithms now prioritize freelancers with high client satisfaction and repeat work. Your goal should be to get those consistent five-star reviews and build relationships with clients who keep coming back. This improves your visibility on the platform and also sets you up for long-term projects. Finally, keep your portfolio updated with the most niche specific work. No matter what you have to do to get this niche specific work into your portfolio, go and do it. Even if you have to make projects for yourself um, at home just to get experience for that niche specific work. Clients should be able to look at your profile and immediately see examples that match the type of project that they want done. If you're all about Shopify stores, then every piece in your portfolio should reflect that niche. It's not about quantity anymore and having 500 websites you've built. It's about relevance. So let's talk about AI tools. You probably heard a million people talking about this, but they're not going to replace you yet. And it's not about them doing all the work for you. It doesn't really work that way. And it's not going to work like that for a very long time. Start with tools like ChatGPT for writing proposals, but it's all about the prompt you use and how you can make it sound not like AI and ultra personalized. It's more about that than the tool itself. Although once you do have the right prompts, it saves you a lot of time. It's basically the parts of freelancing that are repetitive and boring. You want to automate them as much as possible. So instead of spending hours fine tuning proposals, let AI give you a solid draft in seconds, then add your personal touch. It's a game changing mechanic for saving time and focusing more on actual project work and actually talking to leads and clients. Then for developers, there are tools like GitHub Copilot. So it's become a standard tool now. It helps write chunks of code, suggest optimization, and can even handle those repetitive coding tasks that just eat up your time. It's like having an extra set of hands that speeds up the work you don't need to overthink about. This means more time to focus on creative problem solving, the stuff clients actually want to pay you a lot of money for. So if you're in design, tools like Midjourney or Dali are fantastic for inspiration or quickly generating concepts. They're going to do all the work for you, as I said before, but they can definitely give you, you know, like a hundred ideas and you can just start working on one of them and like make it great yourself with your own creativity. So you can use AI to come up with initial ideas, which you can then refine. So instead of starting every design from scratch, you can skip ahead to the fun part, bringing a solid 
concept to life. Think of AI as your productivity partner, not a replacement. The real value you bring to clients is in your in your creativity, problem solving, and adaptability. And also it's looking at the whole picture. AI just simply cannot do that. It, it, it's not at that point yet. AI handles the tedious groundwork so you can deliver quickly and keep your quality high. There are people out there who stay out of the AI game completely. Well, they're gonna get screwed in the coming years, not because AI is taking over everything, but because they are not speeding up their work and enhancing how much time they spend on high value activities. And ultimately this is lethal in any business, even if you're a freelancer. So let's talk about video introductions. Video introductions on Upwork and Fiverr are no longer optional. They're what can make you stand out instantly because a lot of people are trying to automate everything and everything sounds more and more generic but this means if you put your face on camera and just talk about your experience if a client has dozens of proposals to review for example a quick 30 second video can put a face to your name build trust and make them feel more connected to you before they've even read your profile so here's how to make an effective video intro keep it short aim for 30 to 45 seconds start by talking about the client and what the client wants so hey you're probably here to get your Shopify store up and and have it generate sales for your business. Uh, then proceed to talking about projects you've worked on before. Probably like John here, whose shop I built, who's generating $10 million a year, you're looking to get a Shopify store as well. Then talk about yourself a little bit more. My name is Alex and I've been delivering Shopify stores for 10 years and generated clients hundreds of millions of dollars in added conversions. For this, I use my process called the Alex e-commerce method. Then give a call to action so people actually book calls with you, uh, cause why else would you be on these platforms? So if you'd like to find out out about how you can grow your e-commerce store using Shopify. And if I can help you do it, please book a call by clicking the book call button. Make sure your energy matches the kind of work you want to attract. You don't have to overdo it. Just be friendly, direct, and confident. If you're weird and overconfident and you're like, hey, uh, yeah, I probably I can't help you, but screw you, you're gonna get very negative people. That's an extreme example, but you know, it's a nuanced point. So no scripts, no reading, just talk naturally as if you're explaining your work to a friend. Like I use scripts for almost everything, but my videos are like 10 minutes long. I have to use a script. But if you're just talking about something you wanna explain to a friend and it's 30 seconds, Seconds, you don't need a script. Just get some bullet points and follow that. It's more about showing that you're someone they can trust to get the job done without a hassle. So the thing with video is number one more important thing is of course what you say. Then it's lighting, then it's audio, so no echoes or you know too high, too low audio, and that you're dressed in a way that fits your work style. You don't need a fancy background and a fancy suit just something that is clean enough that doesn't distract. Upload this to your profile and let it do the first bit of work for you. Clients who feel a connection to you right away are much more likely to reach out. And if they reach out instead of you having to reach out, it's a totally different conversation. So the thing that makes the most money on these platforms right now is long-term work. So winning a freelance gig is, you know, it's something, or if it's an agency, it's a little bit better. But what's really good is turning a one-time project into a long-term client, that's where the real value lies. In 2025, platforms like Upwork and Fiverr are favoring freelancers who keep clients coming back. It's like YouTube almost. So building ongoing relationships isn't just good for your income, it's also key to getting better visibility and opportunities on these platforms. To nail these relationships, it starts with how you treat the initial project. Deliver on time, communicate clearly, and always over deliver when you can and where you can. Even if it's something small, like giving an, a little extra advice or throwing in an unexpected quick fix, clients remember freelancers and agencies who make their lives easier and they're more likely to reach out again for future work. So after you've completed a project, don't let the conversation end there. Follow up a few weeks later after the job is done and it's clear that they're happy, not with a sales pitch, but just to check in. Hey, just wondering if everything is still working well with the website. Let me know if you need anything. This keeps you on their radar and simultaneously shows genuine care about their success. Clients don't always think about rehiring until they hear from you. So make it easy for them, they're busy. Another tip is when you deliver a project, suggest the next step. For instance, 
If you're a designer handling a logo, mention how you could help them with social media graphics or brand material, if that is what you actually sell. I work with someone who makes 100K per month. He sells something very simple and he says, hey, you have your landing page. Now let's work on your brand presence. Of course, he doesn't do that with startups. He works with people who, with companies already have momentum, they have money to invest. So it's about making your services an ongoing solution rather than an off, one-off transaction. You're just just using freelance websites to move to a more steady flow of projects. You're not there to just do a gig, do another gig, and that's it. That's what where people, you know, F up and then they complain about these platforms because they use it for one-off projects. Not only does this bring consistent income, but it also reduces the time you spend pitching and competing for new work. You want to become the go-to person they think of when they need something in your area of expertise. And in terms of long-term relationships, that means you work with clients who already trust you, allowing you to focus more on doing great work and less on convincing someone a new project needs to be done over and over and over. So then I want to talk to you about what's called skill stacking. This is where you basically add complementary skills of your team to your core expertise and you make yourself far more valuable and harder to replace to clients as a service provider. So start with your main skill, then think about what naturally fits with that skill. For instance, if you're a web developer, adding basic UX design skills means you don't just build websites, you create better user experiences and the difference is huge, by the way. If you're an SEO specialist, learning a bit of copywriting means you can not only drive traffic, but also help convert that traffic. These stacks of skills make you the kind of freelancer or agency, the benefit of an agency, of course, is you could just hire people with these skills, uh, who can deliver a more competitive solution. And clients love not having to hire separate people for every step. This approach also also helps future-proof your freelance business against automation. With AI stepping in to handle many basic tasks, the freelancers who thrive are the ones who combine multiple skills and add human value that AI can't easily match. It's not about being a generalist, it's about carefully choosing skills that when combined make your offering to solve a specific problem more comprehensive and impactful. What about pricing? With more freelancers using platforms like Upwork and Fiverr, it's important to stand out, not just with your skills, but also with how you present your rates. The key is to approach negotiation with confidence, but also to be informed by real numbers. First, check the going rates for freelancers in your part of the world, obviously, uh, on these platforms. This means you can set your rates competitively, but also justify why your pricing matches your experience and skills. When you come to the table armed with real numbers, clients see you as informed and serious, not just picking numbers out of thin air, because that's generally what they think. When you're talking rates, focus on the value of your work, not just the cost. If your call is about negotiating price, it's already screwed, it's over. You might wanna mention some data about it, if it's necessary for that specific type of client, but the moment you start hardcore negotiating as if it's a bazaar somewhere in India, you're screwed. Clients are less concerned about your hourly rate if they can see the bigger picture, how your work directly impacts their business. For instance, if you're building a website, highlight the benefits, faster load times mean higher customer retention, better UX means improved conversion rates. It's about connecting the dots between what you do and how it gets them a better bottom line because that's what they care about these days. Another part you need to do is to offer different tiers of service instead of locking yourself into one rate. Give clients options. Maybe you have a basic package, a more comprehensive package and a premium one. Uh, this allows clients to see the value of going beyond the cheapest option and gives you a way to upsell without pushing. Clients love options and also shows that you're flexible and willing to adjust based on what they need. Of course, you're not, you shouldn't be too flexible. If you're like super flexible, your business is going to be a huge mess. Lastly, always be prepared to walk away if you're not happy about rates or how a client talks to you. I have a whole video about this. I'll link it in the description. So rate negotiation, it's more about being good at sales, having data if necessary to back it up, but definitely focusing on the value you provide and less on the actual negotiation part. It's very important. So as I said, there's a video in the description on how to proceed, how to get started in Upwork, how to make better decisions, how to choose your niche. We cover all this in the videos below. So click on the videos and let's keep going.